Hi there, it's Marion from Wool Thread Paint again and today's tutorial is to show you how to do this very simple side to side slip stitch join which I'm using in the null nine patch blanket to join the large squares together. Um, I'm working with a slightly deeper green than you can see on the sides of the squares. Uh, this is uh, Stylecraft Special in Cyprus and I think it just gives a little accent to the joining stitch. Now in this particular blanket the sides are um, separate from each other so we're not having to do right across the entire blanket it's just joining one uh, nine patch square to another and the stitch is very much as it is uh, described the side to side slip stitch join so basically that's what we're doing we're slip stitching from one side to the other so we start with um, a normal the normal way you would attach your yarn in one of the corners of the pale green and that counts as my first slip stitch. Now I'm going to just find the corresponding corner in the other square and put my hook in and make a slip stitch there as well. And that's us starting the, the um, join along the side over to the first side again and make another slip stitch and then back to the second side and slip stitch and so on. You do build up a reasonable rhythm. I'm a little bit um, slow at it today because I'm working through the camera. Um, it's not quite as uh, user friendly as you would with it if you were just working away. I also quite like to do this stitch sitting at a table. I think it quite is quite um, nice to see it laid out flat on the table and uh, it makes it easier to find the stitches. Now if I do the, this I think you can probably see the little plated effect that you get with the stitch and it does look very neat and precise and holds it all together really beautifully. I really I, I really do like this um, join. I'll do one or two more to let you see and then I'll show you what happens when we get to the at the end you're basically just um, finishing off with it as you would normally finish off. There's nothing fancy to do because it's just one straight row. And the other good thing about this stitch is it is very forgiving in that we know that there are 47, or there should be, 47 treble stitches along each side and therefore there should be exactly 47 stitches to work into. But sometimes it doesn't always work out um, as accurately as that or you may have... Um, missed a stitch at the beginning. These kind of things don't matter particularly with this stitch. You can, when you get to the end, if you find that you're not quite bang on, you can either add in an extra stitch or work over two stitches, whatever. But it does uh, allow you to do that. So you can see how neatly and how quickly it works up. So I'll stop there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back when I have finished this round, this row, sorry, and also the other row to join the other side because what we have at um, the centre is a square that we have to put in to fill up the, the corners here. And I'll show you how I do that with the same stitch. So um, you carry on with this and I'll see you when I've ready to start putting in the centre square. Well now all four sides have been joined and I'm left with a square shaped hole 
which is going to be filled by this grey square. And uh, I've turned the camera a little bit because the blanket is getting so big that it's almost impossible to um, work it overhead. So I hope you can see. Now, the joining stitch that we're going to do for the um, granny square in the middle is exactly the same. It's the side to side slip stitch join. And there are certain points that will make it easier for you to um, work it. We've got corners and we've got corners, so they will correspond. We've also got this middle section, which is the join, and it corresponds with the very middle section on, let's see if I can put that into position, this stitch here, which is the middle of one side of the squares. And now we're going to be working this slip stitch join through the top stitches of each uh, treble, <coughs> excuse me, of the grannies, or half treble in, in the case of the red. So we're not actually going to be working into the large um, spaces between the groups. We're, at, we're going to be going into every stitch along the top. I have, um, I have personally, I've turned the um, square to the wrong side. It doesn't really matter. In fact, you might find it slightly easier if you work it on the front for seeing the stitches on the edge. But since all my others are turned, I'm going to do that. Okay, so I just need to start my green yarn in the corner with the slip stitch. No haste, less speed. Right, that's the slip stitch in position. And I'm going to find the corner of the square. Not the space, not the chain space in the corner, but the um, stitches that go around the edge of the corner. Pick that up. Oops. Let's pick that up again. And pull through a slip stitch. There you go. Right, now we're going to work around. And the only thing that is slightly more tricky than doing the straight edges is the fact that we do have stitches along the edge of the um, granny square. But, of course, when you come to the edges of the um, st strips at the side of the large squares, it, it's a little bit bumpy. It's not as regular as stitches. So what we have to do is we have to try to put stitches in there as neatly as possible. I don't know if you can see that because I've turned the camera, but try to put stitches in there that balance out with the stitches along the edge of the square. That sounds complicated, <coughs> but it really isn't. So what we're going to do is pierce a little bit of the um, edge and pull through a slip stitch. And then go back to the side of the um, square and put in a corresponding slip stitch on that side and then along to this along a little bit roughly the same distance along from a, a normal stitch and put in another slip stitch back over and slip stitch onto the square and remember as I said this centre stitch on the square corresponds with the centre where the um, slip stitch join comes up. So that's where you want to be when you get to that join. You want to be at the centre of the square and that will hold it all nice and it, it doesn't get squint. It holds it all nice and straight. So I'll work along. Try 
try if you can to pick up two loops and also try hard if you can not to go too far down into the um, strip. I'm going to, this is taking a little bit of brute force but we'll get there. Sometimes the table helps if you can't get your hook through a part if you just push it against the table. Oops. I think this is finding it now. That's it. Pick it up and pull it through. And then another. Oops. Into the um, square. And we're getting there. So I can jump along to the green part of the strip at the side. Another stitch along the side. Is me trying to be fast. There we go. And here I am at the middle stitch where the middle of the square is. So I'll pull through my stitch and I'll put my hook in to the top of the slip stitch join. And that's us. I know that we are halfway along. And that's the side to side slip stitch it again side to side slip stitch join along the edge of the square and then by um, working along that same way we'll come to the corner here and then all the way around and I'll see you when I get back to the beginning and here you see that I have gone round the square with the side to side slip stitch join and that's it neatly in place in the middle it does make a nice feature uh, rather than just having the squares, the large squares joined. Um, it makes it slightly more complicated, but I think it really is worth the effort. So that's the side to side slip stitch join.